always are what we always saw We was never up close We was always far Now we almost here Neither here nor there Every niggas fear No man nor fear No fear I got no fuck left to give One dream Gun too big Can't tuck in my jeans Welcome to Work Spouse Welcome, welcome I am David And I'm D'Angela Thank you for joining us On this wonderful Thursday evening um, we want to talk to you about how did we get here. We started a podcast probably about early, uh, no, late September, yeah. and we were able to get our podcast off the ground, mm -hmm. and we got a great opportunity with Listen Vision yes. to do some live radio. So this is our first time doing a live radio se yeah. session, so thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us. We are excited. And as you know, on our podcast, if you listen to we like to, before we get into the topics, we like to do like a little happy hour cocktail, cocktail moment. Yes. So I'm going to turn it over to D'Angela so I'm she can do her the, thing. So I'm actually the bartender for our cocktails. Bartender, okay. <laughs> and I'm a bartender in training. So remember that, David. So if this happens to be not the best tasting cocktail, that is not my fault. I'm in training. So, right. <laughs> and this time I decided to make us a gin cocktail per the other um, the other episodes we've used gin. Okay. So I use gin, but this one is considered a gin ricky. Okay. And what's in a gin ricky is basically gin, lime, and tonic water or soda water. Okay. So I use that. Let's see. I pre-made a little bit of this earlier. So All right. I got my big mug ready, the Yes. <laughs> work spouse mug. Quite a bit in here, okay. so I'm gonna pour myself some. We don't encourage anyone to drink this much <laughs> alcohol. That's not gonna be a good look. And look at her. Look at you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So let's taste. I hope this tastes good. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So so far, she's probably like. I think you're four for four. Yeah. Woo so she's doing pretty good. So if this radio thing doesn't work out, she can be at, you know, one of those coyote. You, know, you gotta have multiple side hustles. So Okay. <laughs> so uh we wanna get into the topic. So work spouse, like what is work spouse? How did we come up with the name work yes. spouse? Because a lot of people don't understand what is work spouse. Do I have work spouse? Uh what is work spouse? So we came up with the title. It's kind of based on the relationship that naturally develops in the office. Corporate America any type of, type of office space, yeah. even here at the radio station, you know, if you have uh, multiple people, relationships do form. Yep. And there's a natural forming that happens. Then you're, there's some bonding that happens and there's some exchanges that makes this person more than a coworker. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then you start caring about this person and you start, you know, getting to the everyday life, mm -hmm. what they're doing. So then all of a sudden it's like, there's a relationship going on, but how, but we're more than co coworkers. Yes. So then some people that have work dads, work moms, and we're going to get into that, but we're going to particularly talk about work spouses. Yeah. So how did we become work spouses? So let me tell you the story. From your David eyes. actually claimed me as his work spouse um, about maybe less than 30 days from being on a job, maybe. Well, when a man knows, he knows. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, okay, okay. All right. So he claimed me within less than 30 days of me being employed on a new job. True. I was going through a work spouse divorce because that happens oh. too at the time. Tell so, us about that, David. So you came in at the right time. Um, <laughs> I was going through a work spouse divorce. Where, um, and we're going to get into the boundaries of work spouses because there are boundaries. And for this particular situation that we have, D'Angelo and I, D'Angela is a beautiful single woman, but I'm actually a married man <laughs> outside of work. So therefore, there are boundaries. And you can have a work spouse, you know, mm -hmm. in a work environment being married. And both couples could be married. Both could be single. This could be any type of mix and match situation. But going back to the situation, I was going through a divorce because the current person that I had as my work spouse, things were just kind of getting a little bit too mm, tell us. close to the what? borderline. Okay. Right. So 
uh, it was time to pull back because there was like feelings on one side that you know just it was not smart to uh, explore mm. in any type of way. So for D'Angelo to come on board at that time, it was good to break up the monotony. So let's get yeah. into the boundaries of okay. a work spouse. All right. Because we don't want people to think that a work spouse is someone that you flirt with. No. That's not necessarily how this works. No. <laughs> now, if you meet someone at work, go right ahead. However, this is not to involve yourself in other affairs with people who are actually taken. <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes, like, you're in a work and environment, and sometimes it's a threesome. And, you know. <laughs> Explain. What? <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Three, threesome. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, oh, it's me, Kelly, and Ryan, or it's me, you know, it's me and two girls, and we all have this bond, and we look out for each other. Okay. So let's talk about what's the description. Let's break it down. The description of work spouse, I would say, would be someone we look out for each other. So, uh, in terms of what's going on in the company, passing along information, uh, if something's going on with management, uh, any type of information to keep each other aware, okay. we share that information. Okay. Uh, you have my back. It's hey, like a family. It's like a family. Hey, I'm 15 minutes your running work late. family. Cover me. Hey, sign, but, in, sign in for me. But your work spouse is specifically for you. Correct. So you don't necessarily share the work spouse. You, you don't share, but I could see there be like a three-way. There, I mean, you may not like the term three way. I do but, not like the term. But three-way. I can see a situation where it could be a three way relationship where we look out for each other. Okay. Or if Andrew's not here, All hey, right. and you know, you got can, this person. So someone, let's put it like this. Okay. Let's say someone just fill in when the other person isn't present. Right. So then the work spouse, you know, you have to give. They have to give you the daily scoop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't really mean like, oh, there's physical touch. You know, this no, is my no, spouse. I get, I get to, okay. you know, touch them. You know. <laughs> things like that. No, that's not the case. Right. But it's more about relationships, more about covering each other, looking out for each other, uh, keeping each other aware okay. of anything that's going on. Uh, hey, if something, yeah, if you're about to get canned or, you know, they're talking <laughs> about you, uh, letting you go, you know, these are the things that work spouses, they, they do. They sh- exchange information to protect each other so they could, you know, be successful at okay. that company. Okay. Okay. I can, I can, I can dig that. So let's talk about the rules of engagement and the boundaries. Mm. Of work spouses. Okay. So, and there's different boundaries. So, so let's talk from you, your point point of view as a single woman. What boundaries do you have with your work spouses in the past and even this current work spouse? Well, I'm not interested in any more other than just a work fling. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but I'm only here for the work time fling. Um, my hours are nine to five. <laughs> Outside mm-hmm. of that, I'm no longer yours. <laughs> that, that's a good point. So boundaries is, okay, you, you, you're you at work and you got a good relationship going on with yeah. the girl at work, but you're texting her on the weekend, no. knowing that she has Don't a man. Don't text me on the weekend. You know, you're uh, sending her pictures and messages. Uh-uh. Hey, I, I was at the mall. I was thinking of you. Blah, nope. That's that's going Only beyond the call of duty. Right. Only right. So related. there is boundaries. My number, one, my number one rule is what? do not fall in love with your work spouse. But it well, happens. Well, you can if you okay. two are single. If you two are single okay. and the chemistry happened that way, by all means. I mean, think about it this way. You're spending most of your time with people at work than you do with people you love the most. Have you're you? you're okay. in this person's space all the time more than other people. So if that's the moment where you met someone and say, oh, we vibe well, then maybe you should explore that. But also, there needs to be boundaries within that, too. And that's a whole nother topic we can go into. Okay. So do you feel like, because, man, we are, we're hunters, we're animals, we're all these Aww. things. And um, do you feel like it's difficult to keep the boundaries? Has it been difficult in the past? Have you had no, any experiences? No, not for me. How about for the men? For the men, because, you know, oh, they've been around oh, you. Maybe for that the used men. to your scent. Oh, you, what, you, what you wearing? <laughs> that Chanel. Oh, you smell so good. Oh, I love your hair. And, you know, <laughs> did you just get it done? And well, all these overly compliments. I mean, that's, those are nice, too. but And that's fine. But I think you can let someone know your boundaries by showing them. Like, if, some, if you don't want to be bothered in the office, all you have to do is keep making excuses. Like, oh, I'm okay. busy. Oh, I can't go to lunch. Oh, I'm not free. Like, you can keep making excuses, and if they don't get the hint, just keep using the same thing over and over again, period. So, okay. so it's just like, you can do all that, but you maintain the boundaries of someone not understanding 
or they'll try to figure out whether or not you're taken too. Okay. So if they know that you're taken and they're still trying their hands, then I become concerned. Like, okay, I don't even want to interact with you at all unless it's really about work or via email or something like that. So have you ever caught a thing for a work spouse? Um. Not that I can recall, no. <laughs> okay. I can't recall any time. Can you recall uh, one of your work spouses, one of your work husbands, you know, falling for you? Or even making a move on you? Um, maybe. I can definitely. I've had quite a few work spouses. And so usually how- it's with married guys. <gasps> I just okay. noticed that. <laughs> okay, so even then, that, the, the rule still stands, you know. Yeah, but I just thought about, like, no one that was single that we had to talk about further movement, you know? Any inappropriate touching from your work spouse? Not inappropriate touching, per se, but inappropriate trying to touch me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. How do you try to touch somebody, but you don't touch them? Like, go like, in or reach for something right. and get close to their breast <laughs> area. Okay. And you're like, oh, you back up okay. a little bit to make sure that... It doesn't happen. So, how? okay, so <laughs> people hug at work. You know, there's touching at work. There's things that happen. I'm not really a... People I'm a, are not hugging like, at work like this is a fan reunion. No, Come I'm on. saying people <laughs> do hug at work. Hey, you're going for the day. All right, see you later. Nobody hugs at work to say, who? what work environment have you worked in where people hug at the end of the day when they're leaving? Some people. What? Okay, I okay. don't do that. I have not oh, been in a work okay. environment so where that took place. So have you had work, work spouses... <laughs> Where they wanted a hug, they expected a hug. Um, no. Okay. Maybe because they have been married and they have stayed within no. their boundaries. Mm-mm, no. The only time I can think of a time where we actually hugged a coworker was when it was maybe a retirement party saying goodbye, okay. or you know, a shower, or maybe someone's having a baby in the office, you know, something like that. But I can't imagine us hugging just at the end of each day. How about, okay, maybe not at the end of each day. How about you go happy hour with the coworkers? Everybody's getting a little loose now. Happy hour, people let their, their guard down. Well, I They're, mean, yeah, people do right, do crazy things So then things when it's time to leave, <laughs> right, so when it's time to leave happy hour, air, you know, people going in, for the, they're making their move. They may right. whisper in your ear, hey, where are you going after this? Hey, you need a ride, hey. No, I can, okay, so <laughs> you that, share, you yeah, share a lift? people, right. you can, yeah, you need to, for yeah. one, you need to kind of stick to a drink minimum when you're going to happy hour. Okay. Why is that? Because you need to know your limits and being drunk in front of your peers, <laughs> your coworkers in particular. Okay. Good point. So you should probably stick to a minimum of drinks that you know you're going to be coherent and leaving and not saying some crazy stuff that's going to be filtered through the office the next day. <laughs> okay. So that's for one. But and you also know those people who are trying to take it further also before you even get to happy hour. So be cognizant on those people as well, you know. OK, so I want to get back to this work spouse thing. Okay. Have you ever been in a situation? Another sip out of this <laughs> no, it's good. Mug. Yeah. So have you ever been in a situation where you had two people competing for to be uh-uh. your spouse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that. Like, how do you choose? <laughs> I okay. have actually. Okay. So I was there with one person who was already my work spouse. Okay. He was married. And then another person came on board and he was not married and he wanted to be my work spouse. But he didn't ask me. It was no like formal invitation. Like you're my work spouse, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. It was more so like, hey, um, yeah, let's hang out. Let's go to lunch. But they saw me always going to lunch with my current work spouse Mm -hmm. so it became a thing like oh are you going to are you going to lunch with such and such are you not free you know like it came it was these little like conversation little like underlining (laughs) you know things of like hey are you not available for lunch blah 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 or are you going with such you know to let them Mm. to let me know that they were like actually watching me going to lunch or actually who i was going to lunch with or even if i wasn't going to lunch with that person they would make it a point to say are you going to lunch with this person? Right. <laughs> so are you careful about what your coworkers and counterparts think of you, like yeah, your interaction? I am. Especially with men and things like that. Although it's inevitable because I feel like everywhere I go, people make their own judgments anyway. <laughs> so, okay, because so, you are attractive, and sometimes attractive women, Thank they you, get um, unfair bias towards them. Wait, what do you mean? Explain. Like, okay, you know... They see the beauty more than the brains, and they think, oh, "Oh, this person has navigated through." 
Excuse the, me. <laughs> I mean, they they have navigated <laughs> through work through uh, the corporate ladder uh, based on that, but then also they perceive that you know, well, this person is hanging out with this person only because you know they're nice looking. They're trying to get something. There's like uh, something attached to no. that. No, uh, I mean I one was above me in okay. his organizational chart, <laughs> and the other one was. Well, the other one was above me too, but not too much. So one was like above the old or current work spouse, okay. whereas the other one was like right kind of like, yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking about if it mattered and that like it appealing that it appearing that I'm actually trying to get something from them because of their organizational chop characterization, like where they where they stand. Okay. But I don't think so. So. Okay. So. What made you feel comfortable with choosing me as your work spouse? Well, um, um, you actually was the first person to welcome me, okay. make me feel welcome. Yeah. Um, no one really came and asked me anything or how I felt about anything and blah, blah, blah. You know, like normal things that happen on the work environment, within the work environment when you're new. Right. So... I, you made me feel welcome, and you also had to train me. True. So you were assigned to train me, and David did a good job at training me, giving, showing me the ropes. I felt like you were real, too, so it was like yeah. a, almost like a perfect pair. Because Correct. if I was with anyone else, they probably wouldn't have gave me so much yeah. insight to the environment. Yeah, because I'm the type of person, if I'm going to train you, I'm not just going to show you just the benefits of the company and things that are going on with the job. I'm going to show you the dirty laundry, too. Like, hey, good. you know. And I appreciate that. Yeah, this, this yeah. part needs to be iron now you know there's some wrinkles over here there's right. some things going on over here and watch out for this just because I, I believe that i want somebody to give me the, f the full scoop too of course everybody has the right to form their own opinion yeah yeah and you need to form form your own opinion but at the same time hey just give me the real let me know but what's what going made on. you want me as your work spouse because you were there, had a work spouse, so you didn't necessarily need another. Right, and and, and my work spouse, <laughs> yeah, and my work spouse was was easy on the eye too. But uh, your but, current one? Yeah, I mean, what yeah. are you trying to say? Oh no, 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 oh, okay. no, 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 I, no, no, I, I knocked two home home runs. I I made okay. two home runs, but yes, uh, clarify that. You know, sometimes it's just about the um, the energy as well as conversation and just uh, being compatible. So compatibility. Mm. Uh, just a little bit more on the same page. Um, so let's so let's check off some boxes here. Okay. Let's check off the box that was similar. Yeah. And, and then in way in the box that made it different for you to jump ship. Because <laughs> that's okay. basically what right. you did. Okay, so boxes that are similar. Uh, yes. I think both are nice uh, mm -hmm. generally. Okay. But however, she's nice all the time. Even when she has a reason not to be nice. You let... You're nice within reason. If somebody crosses you, then you're going to handle them accordingly, mm -hmm. which to me sure. is being more authentic yes. and more real. So I get to see the real side of you. I don't want to see the smiley oh, side. Oh, I see. So you're time. actually saying that. See, at first I was taking it as right, that you did not. <laughs> right, right. No, right, right, right. I know. I know. I know. So you're actually saying that you didn't find that her nice was genuine or or maybe you're saying that you didn't know when it was and when it wasn't. Right, because sometimes like when you... it was when, always a face right. all the time that she was nice. Correct. When you're in corporate America, sometimes ah. uh, you just try to be... You don't want to show them who you really are. Of course, we can I never see. be who we are at home. I'm expressive, <laughs> so I would express whatever I was... Well, I can't say yeah. whatever, but I guess I would let you know right. when I was uncomfortable or when I was great mood. Or you could see it. Is that what you're saying in my actions? Like, what Yeah, not I'm, that you... It's just like... Because the fact that you're going to show me niceness and you're going to show me when you're upset, mm -hmm. you're going to show me different kinds of emotions, so I get to get the full picture of you. Okay. With so her, she didn't give you that. I'm getting just nice all the time. Hey, you don't got to be nice all the time. You got to say thank you all the time. Oh, so you felt that it wasn't authentic? It was. No, all of it wasn't authentic because there was times where she could have been upset because she was double crossed at work or, you know. So if I'm hearing you correctly, okay. I check off. The authentic box. Okay. That's I give that. Saying. Yeah. And, okay. and I try to cut her short, but I think she's just putting on the front for work, which is okay. Some people put on front for work, and we all do yeah. to a certain extent. Yes. You know, without 
compromising who David really is, who D'Angelo really yeah, is. Yeah, but I feel like once we create that closeness, I then can get a little tiny real with you than all the others. Right. Because then you what know? happens is, it's like, if you're nice all the time, if I'm, if you're my work spouse and I'm dealing with a real issue, uh-huh. uh, and I want to talk about something, okay. you know, off the clock, uh, if you're, if I can't trust that you're gonna give me the real answer. Uh, then I'm, I'm going to be least likely to share. Mm-hmm. Hey, no, you, you know, you're no, happy I, all the time. I understand no, I'm the same I, way, Let me yeah. talk to this person over mm-hmm. here who actually, you know. Yeah, I get that. Okay, okay. so the authentic box, okay. and then you said something about the chemistry. What What do you mean exactly? Is that, like, how does, is, am I getting all that wrapped up into the authentic? Okay, I mean, me and her chemistry was good. Uh, her, Me and her chemistry was good. I'm not okay. going to downplay that. Okay. Um, with you... Um, I can see it more. We're just on the same page. Just, just about certain things that are happening in society. Um, okay, so we have the same social awareness. Social we awareness vibe on that level, right? Okay. Um, and and I don't think she wants to explore those things. I think you know she just wants to do work and that, and that which is fine. But then also, uh, I can see this forming into true like you know a brother sister type you know yes. friend relationship yeah. well that's the chemistry that i <laughs> right. got from it right so when you think of chemistry it doesn't necessarily always mean that it has to be romantic chemistry right it can be platonic chemistry as well but with with her i could see it going a romantic route oh so she wanted more Right, and I'm not not putting Ooh, around. I mean, I okay. can see it going that route just based on Sounds like some how the relationship was forming. So then, me being a true married man, it's like okay, so we gotta dial back. Oh, you gotta uh, make sure those boundaries are in place. Right, and she and she respected the relationship. I'm not saying that she ever violated, you know, my marriage or anything like that, or said anything. Um, you know, to make me Out have to really check her. Okay. Nothing okay. like that. I can see. But however, you got to be able to sniff out, okay, this could be prob- this could be a problem. Okay. Uh right, because even me being a married man, not not that I'm never gonna be attracted to another woman. That's not no, I, don't, yeah. I don't live that long. No, no, no. I don't think no one walks around thinking I'm only gonna be attracted to this one person that I'm seeing right now. No, we're people. We can be attracted to other people. That doesn't necessarily mean that you take it further with those people though. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, and you should you have the discipline. So it's like Yeah. So when I say even a safe choice just because <laughs> I'm safe. <laughs> right, I'm right, just right. Safe. And it's not like, oh. I, mean, I don't have anything right, more to offer right, right, than right, that. Right, and it's not that <laughs> you don't have, uh, you know, li- nice features about you that could, you know, make a man be romantic. But I just think that we have I see. already established uh, boundaries mm-hmm. and just a respect level mm-hmm. uh, in, a direct- in a direction of our relationship. I think with her, it was still kind of a little shaky ground. Basically, she would be... Like, she would actually tamper or, like, dab, like, kind of, like, in between those lines of respecting yeah, like, that you are a it's like married this, man. Like, like when I look person. at you, like, and we talk, it's mm-hmm. like I never got the sense that, oh, oh you're gazing at me and, like, oh. you're just. That I want more or yeah, I want something right. and else. I'm or not saying, I would get to that point right, with you. Right. And I'm not saying okay. that I'm, like, the best looking guy or anything right. like that. That's not what I'm saying. Like, I'm not okay. trying to feed myself. No, I'm just wondering, I was but just wondering how that works. I am an experienced man who is retired from the game and <laughs> yeah, I eat as, as a platinum <laughs> member, <laughs> I'm retired from the game okay. and I can sense okay, and I can <laughs> and I can feel when marriage is platinum. <laughs> right, yeah, I can feel when there there's trouble ahead. Right. So then I'm like, okay, th- there's trouble ahead, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, time to dial back. So you came in at a good time. Okay. Perfect timing. So, so when selecting which spouses do they come in at a good time and yeah. make your life better? Yeah. So for those <laughs> who are listening, so when selecting your work spouse and things like that, uh, if you're really trying to keep it in line within the rules, where there's no um, crossing line, no no hanky panky or whatever, <laughs> hanky panky, no, no, no matter how you okay. want to put it. Uh, Make sure that you know you don't have those type of attractions. And we know attractions could grow just based off of social, yeah, yeah, communication things like that. Or and having developing that work spouse relationship right. because you are then being able to have those conversations with each other about your personal lives, right? And it goes like outside of work, right? And, so, there, and, and it goes back to the boundaries. So how much 
can you share with your work spouse? Because for a minute, if you share so much, you they're going to not just be a sounding board. Yeah, and then you're developing an emotional connection. Correct. That's emotional cheating. Right. And that co- that that kind of goes and spill over into emotional cheating. So what are the boundaries on that emotional connection and just the social and well, the sharing that you do? I think it's the person's job who have the higher membership, platinum. Okay. So okay. you are the married man, right? You decide then how much you share of your relationship. Absolutely. And yeah. sometimes it's a feedback situation. So if like you said with the authentic with the being authentic with the previous current work spouse, uh-huh. if you decide then that we're not going that far, then I'm not going that far with you either. But some people will overshare or share a little bit more because they feel that sometimes your membership is higher right. so you can give advice to them in their I guess in their relationship outside of work. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, and it's like I can't, you being single, I can't let you depend on me emotionally. Yeah. And once I see that you're depending on me emotionally, that's a good point, David. Then I have crossed some boundaries. The boundaries. Because I know that, okay, so then now you're going to be checking on me. You're going to be, hey, you know, I'm dating this guy. You know, what do you think about that? Or, you know, my heart got broken. This guy stood me up, blah, blah, blah. Then I have to pick you up. Then I have to pick you up. Then all of a sudden, I, I end up being your. Rescue your shining armor, your black <laughs> shiny <bald> armor. <laughs> armor. You know, you know, rescue coming in on uh, my horse. Shining horse, my <laughs> yeah. knight in shining yeah. armor. <laughs> so, so then what happens is I can't support you mm-hmm. and support my wife. I mean, I could barely, I could barely support my wife emotionally. If we're just being real, <laughs> you know, man, we could barely support the, uh, the one woman that we with. One woman. Yeah. I say I want other women men to hear that. Like yeah. it's hard to I mean, support just yeah. one woman. So. I can't support more Multiple. than one woman. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my Noted. life is too busy. And I'm not going to even lie. I don't have time to try to, you know, keep this woman uplifted and keep my wife uplifted. That's That's too much. Right. That's a lot. It's too much. So I have to be careful even just in the, you know, forming this relationship or any relationship with another woman. um, They can't become dependent on you. You know, I can't be the one that lifts you up and tell you, oh, you look good. And you're looking forward to me telling you, oh, you're wearing that dress, girl. You know, stuff like that. (laughs) Oh, you know, I love the way you did the makeup today and your accessories, the way you coordinated that. That's, Girl, you doing But those it. are nice yeah. things to say. Nice I mean, you to have to say it every day. Like, you're not right. obligated. Like, no. As if but, it's your wife. Well, people don't even feel but obligated the thing, when it's their spouse. Right, so. but the thing about it, I can't out, I can't out compliment you more than I do my wife. Right. I can't. But I wouldn't know that. Right. You wouldn't See, know that's that. That's the thing. I would know that only you would be able to keep tally Correct. of those things, not me. Right. And people, and that's why you have to really assess the relationship that you have. Even being a married man, you have to assess the relationship that huh. you have with other women and make sure that you're not giving a treatment level that higher at work than you're giving at home. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because that's dangerous. It like, is. That's, that's, that's territories. Yeah. So, uh, you know, these are all just boundaries. These are all, you know, just rules of engagement. Your work spouse is not the person you flirt with. No. Your work spouse is, you know, the person that you could kind of be depend on. Yes. Uh, you have an honest relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, or you could have work mom and dad spouse. Okay, let's talk about or, that. Or wait, no, no, I said that wrong. Work mom and dad. Yeah, a work you mom know, and a yeah. work dad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and people have that. You know, you got, you know, sister love and or stuff. Sister, and, oh yeah, sister. Right. <laughs> right, you got, you got all these things. Yeah, it's all different. Brother. Brother, yeah. It can be a work spouse where, well, a work brother, I should say, instead of spouse, that you all are just like brothers and sisters. But you're both <laughs> yeah, in relationships, yeah. I guess, and you just feel like brothers and sisters. Yeah, and I, I think I made a comment on one of the podcasts, and I said, well, everybody has a work spouse. Then uh, somebody Commented, texted us, yeah. and they said, no, I work in a warehouse. <laughs> we we, we <laughs> we'll got, have that. Yeah, I said, good, 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 yeah. I understand. You may not. I worked in a warehouse before. No, so I So I guess it's have. just one sex. I mean, you yeah. can still in one sex. Somebody may be feeling another yeah, person. Yeah, but I, when I worked in a warehouse, yeah, I had it could be a bromance. It could be a, oh yeah. my gosh, it can be any type of, like, arrangement, actually, now that I think about it. You can still have a bromance, or you can, even if you work in the same spouse, you can still have, like, a lover of the same sex. Right, I support yeah. all of that. So, Yeah. Okay. I like I like the idea of having we're work spouses because how, I mean I guess because we just classify it as right. that. But you can be work. Okay. Can can there be a work spouse abuse? <laughs> Explain. Okay. I don't a work spouse abuse. <laughs> right. How does that work? Or, or misusing. <laughs> right. So you know some people may thinking maybe thinking hey I got a work spouse. 
because oh I, I'm always doing these chores for this girl. Um, you know, I'm buying her lunch. Oh, I'm uh. You buying lunch all the time? It's not like a, a right. I'm I'm just clarifying because there's some guys out there who think they have a work spouse, but you actually just have a pimp. A p- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, a pimp. Right. Oh my gosh, this is no longer yeah. in the lines of no. work spouse or brother, no. sister, no. aunt, uncle. You can have a, like. watch out for the work <laughs> pimp, the person that oh. My oh God. Jerry, I forgot my wallet. I see. At home. So you're saying yeah. people who are going into the situation using right. their resources for Correct. their own betterment. Right. I mean, cause they, they, <laughs> there could be a guy. I hey, I never thought about it that let, way. That's yeah, so funny. Let's say uh, we work together. We work in accounting, mm. and I'm not that good in Excel. So I have you set up the templates, and I'm oh, always this is not just relying. For lunch. Uh, yeah, I'm relying on you to help me with my work. So I'm kind of pimping you out oh my on gosh. the sources that you have. Right. This has happened to me. So things happen. So guys may use girls for a brain and for I feel things. Like when okay, when a yeah. person is older in management or something, uh-huh. they pimp me out for my skills. Okay. Because I'm younger than them. Right. Oh my gosh. So that's like an auntie pimping me out to help her out. Watch out for the work pimps. <laughs> <laughs> not, not oh just, my gosh, I never yeah. even thought about it like yeah, that. Yeah, we're gonna do a special uh I've been episode. pimped out at work. Watch out for the work pimps. Oh the gosh. ones that have you, you know, doing all these Special favors and things like that. This is ridiculous. You know, oh, what you cooking for, cooking for, cooking the, for dinner? It's the ageism, too, because if you're, right. that's what I'm basically getting at ageism. If they know the younger people in the office, so they assume that they know how to do yeah. computer related technology. things right. or stuff that they don't. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So then, like, I haven't Dang, had, you like, might be onto something I, know, here. I know I'm onto something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, check this out. So, I mean, I worked with somebody and uh, oh, you've they, been pimped out too. Oh no, no, I, I watched it, I observed it. David, it's and okay uh, to admit we, that we were working, out. we were working it together as a group. And there was this girl, same girl, and she cooked, and she cooked a lot, and things, things like that. Mm. And the guy that I worked with, he was married, but he used to always ask the girl, "Hey, you know what you cooking? Are oh, you cooking wow. enchiladas? Oh, I love your enchiladas. Can you bring in some extra?" Wait, so you don't me? think that's maybe crossing boundaries? Let's get into that. Okay. Because, like, if you are married, okay, how do you say, oh, no, I don't need lunch, you to pack lunch, honey. I have someone at work for giving me lunch. That's my work spouse. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Like when That's me my, unacceptable. Before <laughs> me and my wife was dating, like, I was working somewhere, and uh, this girl used to make me cookies because I, I love sweets. But cookies so are chocolate. different than whole lunch. <laughs> Hold up. I don't know. So uh, she was making me these cookies, and they were good. So then once I started getting serious with my current wife now, as in dating and, you know, going into engagement and things like that. Mm-hmm. My wife said, you ain't getting no more cookies. You ain't getting no more cookies? <laughs> right, right. But the thing about it, <laughs> when you cut someone off, are you going to replace that desire? Like, are you going to make new cookies? No. But, you know. I mean, I don't think, no. I, don't, I think you're thinking it's wrong. I don't think it's fair to okay, tash your wife with doing something she never did before. Now, right, if but it's something you like, I understand that you can make a suggestion. However, to be like, well, are you going to make me cookies? Then I'm going to keep, no, right. no, 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 no. And That's I took it, and, not and, okay. And I, and I stopped getting the cookies, and no, I didn't get cookies from my wife either. <laughs> but uh, these things happen. Yeah, Good. these things happen. <laughs> and, you know, and just back to my coworker that I have. So he had, he was married, and he had uh, this girl, every time she cooked something, hey, bring the extra bowl. And th- those are the type of things where you have to wa- watch out for somebody pimping out. So the girl may think in her head that they like the stuff, or they oh, really that we have more than a relationship. Hey, yeah, I'm cooking. Yeah, I'm making some extra oh. tacos. Yeah, I'm making it for mm. Brandon. Whatever, I'm gonna bring him some too. He likes my cooking, <laughs> so that's flattering that he likes my cooking. That's and, true, but so, I don't. I wouldn't think about that. Someone who's already married. Now, right. if that person was single, right. Then I would be like, oh, this person might actually like right. me more than just office. Like, they would take this further. But, yeah, pimping can happen, single, married, but pimping does happen. And, 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 and the <laughs> Pimping work, does yeah, happen. Yeah, okay. it does happen in the work environment. Okay. Yeah. So you have to watch out for the uh, work. Sp- <laughs> I don't think work I've been pimp. pimped by a guy in the office. I mean, I do cook as well. And okay. when I, I'll bring in leftovers for people to try. But I enjoy cooking and legit want people to try it, whether it's a, a male or a female. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a problem with that, but I'm not doing it all the time. Like, it's not a daily occurrence. Right. You know, I'm not bringing in this stuff all the time for you to try. Oh, I made this. Here's your bowl. Or right. here's mine. No. Uh-uh. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, everyone plays the fool sometimes. That's true. And not, I'm not playing no work. And, and sometimes, you know, people <laughs> get caught up 
into that pattern and hey and and you you end up cooking the Thanksgiving meal and you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Thanksgiving meal. That's far. Okay, okay. So don't get pimped. Don't no pimping in the office. Recognize the pimp signs before it happens. Right. So, or in the midst of it, maybe, because you probably won't recognize Right. You, if you're getting picked right now, get out of it. <laughs> we'll help you. Uh, Call it quits. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll write you a letter how to get out of it. So uh, another topic that we had. Um, oh, yes. We had uh, work versus personal relationships. Mm. So being in a supervisory or a boss position at work, let's say you're a female. Okay. Do you bring, is there, is there, you have to transition before you go home. Yes. And I have been in a relationship. Let me just give you the scenario where I was dating a girl and she was a supervisor mm -hmm. at work and she had subordinates and people up on her. She might have had like a, even as large as a team of 20 okay. people up on her. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And because she's used to barking on orders and having people assist. Mm -hmm. she kind of brought that mentality home with her. Oh, so because of her position right. as the boss at work, there we she go. came home being the boss at home. Correct. Mm. So I want to dive, and I want to take a, you know, a miniature dive into this discussion okay. because this happens, you know. Yeah. Where People forget that their position at work is not the same as their position at right. home. I, this is interesting. Okay. And let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because when I speak to my girlfriends and those who are in positions where they are the manager or the head of their team, we actually want to go home to someone who actually managed life for us. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. I don't want to go home being the same person that I was at work. I want to go home being relieved that someone else is going to take the reins on this life of mine. Because right. I've been making decisions all day long. And I don't want to continue to make any more decisions. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, that makes it's sense. It's actually the opposite for me. I don't want to be the boss at home. So, but what happens is, so if the guy that you're dating, the guy you're living with or whoever, your mm -hmm. husband, boyfriend, if they do not meet the task, doesn't it naturally kick in for you to just kick in gear and start taking well, over? I see. I think that goes back to their relationship. Okay. So... Whatever they have cultivated in their relationship thus far, I think that's how they'll manage home tasks. So you didn't go to work and came and, and then come home at some at some point and say, "Oh, say, hey, I'm gonna manage this task the same way I do at work." You already established that relationship. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like, but, but I do feel like sometimes, I guess, getting to your point, that people who have certain positions. Mm -hmm don't know how to turn them off when they're no longer at work. Correct. And that's the point. They don't know how to Ooh. transition. You get in the car, there has to be a transition that takes place between home, between work and home. But then you have to take in, the, in consideration the person's personality that you're seeing or your, your girlfriend or your husband or wife or whatever. Your partner, uh, whomever that may be. Okay, so for our co-workers, for our listening audi audience... My suggestion would be, yeah, tell us. Okay, because you, you have to blow off. Some people have to blow off steam when mm -hmm. they on the, their way home. You got time in your commute to do Correct. that. Correct. Some people have to <laughs> blow off stress. Mm -hmm. But the main thing you have to do is separate what that day. The two titles. In the two titles, okay. you have to be able to separate, because what happens is you you you're in this pattern at work and you have developed a way of talking to people. Okay, and, so. And, okay. and, the, and the reason I say that, <laughs> I'm going to get... So I got you, some more questions yeah, yeah, here yeah, yeah. You, on you, how to navigate this. Yeah. So you, de you developed a way how to talk to people. So then you're in this pattern, habitual pattern that keeps happening. So you're barking orders. You're getting people to assist to run these tasks. It's hard for people to fall back into the role of, hey, we're just partners. Hey, now you take the lead. But I would think that once you get home or step of, okay. step past that front door threshold, mm -hmm. that you then understand that you take off that hat and put on the other one. I would because like to hear. Because of the okay. person okay. who you actually have to go home to. So even if you came home, even if I was a boss at home, I mean at work, and I came home and my husband was not that way or my partner or girlfriend or whomever okay. was not that way, 
I would think that they would like check me real quick. Be right. like, mm, you're not at work. Excuse me. Right. You know, like, or mm, let's have a conversation about <laughs> this right. because this is not how this is going. So those people are to like reel you in. Like, mm, I'm sorry. Right. And, 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 in my, <laughs> and in my experience that I have with this particular person who has supervisor, I mean, it's like, it's like we're both tr- trying to fit in the driver's seat. And no. there's only one seat belt and there's only one wheel. Yeah. Then and, that means you <laughs> need to establish the boundaries within your relationship first. Because it's no way that, like, and there's nothing wrong with the driver's seat, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think the driver's seat rotates depending on exactly the task that needs to be accomplished. Right. So we always talk about men having egos. So do women have egos, too, when they get this <laughs> position of power or leadership at work? I don't think women need position of power to have ego. You said I, what? I don't think women need to be in position of power okay. to have ego. Does it, I actually okay. think women have bigger egos than men. Oh, I never heard that. Yeah, I just think we have a different way of showing it. Example. Um, like we sometimes do things like I think if women want something, we after we have said numerous times to you what we want, I think we go about it by making subtle hints or kind of like doing things that make you kind of get on board with what we want or how we want things to be done. Gotcha. Okay. So if I keep saying, hey, I need the garage painted. I need the garage painted. I mean, just giving a crazy example. I don't mm-hmm. know. Just something, a stupid task that we just, they just give on our nerves, but you all are not doing. This is a, hey, I need to go. Okay. And I just started to like, okay, I hire someone to paint the garage. You'd be like, wait, I was going to paint the garage. I told you I was going to paint the garage. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, no, I, di- I told you that a month ago. You didn't do it, but it's okay. I did this. Right. So then that goes to the communication. <laughs> so we have this communication <laughs> issue at work, communication issue at home. I was going to do it without so you. So with men, it's like, <laughs> if my wife tells me, hey, I need you to, we're going to stick with the same thing, paint the garage. Okay. You need to tell me <laughs> what color you want me to paint the garage. Okay. And when... So, I need to paint so the garage. So those are questions Why? you ask us. Right. But sometimes it's You like, just want us to give you... Remember every... But then it, it doesn't matter detail. when you ask us, too. You can't ask us in a moment where we ain't got our time. brain is we ain't got consumed time. with we something else. We don't have the time. I mean, and the same thing works. <laughs> like when like, your supervisor really? at work tells you to do something, <laughs> you know, we need to know due dates. Cause but we, exactly. We, so when a supervisor yeah. tells you something at work, uh-huh. sticking with the same thing... Yeah. They didn't say, hey, I need this done, Mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z, right? And if the supervisor left anything out, you know what you do? Follow up. Oh, when? In this format? In that format? Mm -hmm. How would you like to send? On this, you ask those questions. So you need need the guy to take initiative. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, you do at work. You're basically stating. You're stating that you take that same initiative at work, but you do not take that same initiative at home. You want me then to take that initiative and give you all the outline of everything and then say oh you never told me to do this well, I guess oh the you truth never is, told me to do that <laughs> well, no well i guess no, the truth no, is when no. you, when you're asking us <laughs> women when you ask see the us games men, we play the games we yeah, play when you're asking us to do something that we don't want to do that's when we need all the but, information and my point <laughs> yeah. is this because you're getting paid to do something at work mm-hmm. no one have to ask you to make that initiative no one in your right. relationship should have to ask you to make that initiative either because you're not getting paid. Your payment is my Ooh, presence. I don't know. There, there has your to payment be some is my presence. Pay- there has to be a form of payment no. even at home. Not- you, you, my presence is your form of payment. Mm, appreciation. There's other things, of course. Some tricks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that it's not fair yeah. that you don't kind of conduct or have the same mm. level of boundaries in your relationship that you do at work because you're being paid to do it. I mean, yeah, but I still think there's just a different form of payment. It is a yeah. different form yeah. of payment, but yeah. that's why it should be more conducive for you to actually go further with asking those questions. Hey, what color? Did you consider a color? Well, then let me know when you figure it out. If not, you know? Yeah. Oh, hey, what are you sure? Because I was thinking maybe we shouldn't do this at this moment. Like, whatever. You will have those conversations with your boss or your superior at work or whomever. Yeah. If they gave you some ambiguous details, you will ask further questions to get the actual answer to understand how to proceed. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, going back to mm-hmm. just the way you talk, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, to your spouse, to your partner at home. And versus the way you talk to, you know, your coworkers, the way you talk to your subordinates. Right. Uh, 
it has to be checked. Yeah. And you know, and just the way, even the way you deliver the information, mm-hmm. uh, the tone has to be different. Everything has to just be framed differently. And I would love to hear from more of the viewers, more of the listening audience. Yes. Their I would experience. Too. And even I was looking for people to be honest, man and woman. Hey, yeah. yeah, I'm a boss at work and I'm a supervisor at work. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a CEO yeah, of this company. How do you manage company. those relationships at yeah. home and Yeah, at and work. how do you talk? Do you have issues talking to your spouse because, you know, because of the role that you play at work? Yeah. Uh, I wonder the same. So that made that let, let that be the question yeah. that we ask you all to give us more feedback on. Right. Do you have do you have those issues? Because uh, even for me, and like I think we talked about this before, it's like mm-hmm. I think people who do a job that their brain is consumed with, you know, constant energy and pumping information out and typing and things like that and researching and things like that. When they go home and get in the car, you know, they need to decompress yeah. and they don't want to come home and play twenty questions with right. their partner. I think everyone needs to find what that looks like for them and mm-hmm. communicate that with the their partner. Right. So if you all have the to have to ride together in the same commute home together, you know, maybe music or maybe not having a conversation about work mm-hmm. until later on. Right. Or having a hour to yourself yeah. when you get home. Because if you work construction, it's like, you know, <laughs> you, you, you come home and your spouse, hey, can you wash the car? Hey, you know, I've been on my feet, you know, doing all this manual level yeah. all, all I didn't day. Think about it like that. You know, it's, that's tough. So I think you have to consider what does your spouse do, the role that they play at work. Oh, I see the for, profession. Or, right. Uh, and when, for when they come home. that and how you, it can be taxing on their yeah. on them versus coming home to right. the relationship. Hmm. Because that could build more stress. Hey, I don't even want to come home. I'm going straight to the bar because I know <laughs> she's going to be asking me all these kind of questions. She wants to know when we're going to do oh this, when we're going to do that. And I'll forget that. You know, you know I I'm tapping out. I never out. thought about it that way. I just assume people respect each other's spaces because – they knew what their partner was enduring in the smallest, even right. if it wasn't a highlighted, you know, in the smallest because of their professional title. Right. Yeah. Or their title in general. So. Yeah. But are we truly considering, you know, how, what type of toll or what type of day that they have and what, how it, you know, took a toll on them? Well, you, you know? should ask. Yeah. I, I think a spouse should ask. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's back, you know, communication. In the workplace, communication at home, it can never, you know, it's, it's underrated. Okay. It, it has to always. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced, like, being in a situation where you've actually, or your partner, mm-hmm. done those things, like treated home like work? Or have you have you been told that you treat home like work? Um, I don't think where I... I mean, I've been like the boss over some teams, some things like that, mm-hmm. and or have someone done it to you? I think now that I think about it, because uh, yeah, I do music. I was doing music, and I had a group under mm-hmm. me, and and even my wife, she was part of the group, and like she may have like some input or something to say about music wise, mm. and I might shut her down because you know I'm the leader oh. of the group. Oh. Yeah, and I you know I caught myself doing that. Wow. And that could so be. You, you know, are a victim. <laughs> that could, of hey, <laughs> hey, number one thing is you gotta recognize your missteps. So I, I did recognize okay. that. Like first like, sign is admitting. Like, like maybe yeah. she had a point. Like she made something. Hey, you know maybe you could be mixing something. She'd be like, oh, this is too loud. You need to turn that down. And I'm like, no, it's fine, it's fine. But then she leaves the room. Then you start thinking about it. Well, maybe it is too loud. And but you know, you know things like that, guys. We do you know crazy things like uh-huh. that. Yeah, yeah that's, I see. That's but. That ego or, you know, that boss mentality. Yeah, I think uh, there have been moments where I had to check myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it happens. So you've had to check yourself, but have you experienced where you've actually been in a situation where you have to check the partner? Yeah. Like the woman. Or yeah, the woman that I was dating who was a supervisor over 20. Yeah, I had to tell her all the time, hey. I'm not your little uh, <laughs> I'm not your subordinate, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm not your clerk. Yeah, so I I'm not the, tr- the janitor. So, so right. for me, I, that's I'm, I appreciate that yeah. because if I'm getting out of line, you are then, from my understanding, mm-hmm. creating boundaries within our relationship. Right. So then you're letting me know I don't need you to handle that here. I got yeah. this. Yeah, but or I don't need you to do that. But then what happens is, okay, but what happens is the. The woman is used to calling the shots. So yeah. then what happens, she doesn't trust anyone else to call the shots because she's just used to it. So she has lost her trust 
in humanity. It was just like she has lost her trust in somebody navigating through the relationship. That you have those issues too. Okay. But it's like I should have your well, one thing if something if we're forming something new, mm-hmm. I should have your trust off the back okay. and let me demonstrate that I cannot handle it. Right. Or I abuse it, or I can't handle before it before I insert myself. Be- is what before you're you insert yourself, or okay. before you take the tr- before you take it from me, the the duty. So before I just <laughs> rule right. you in myself, yeah, or but, do right. it myself, right? But there's okay. some women who they already assume when well, he's not gonna be able to figure this out. He doesn't. Oh, I see. So before they allow you yeah. to say or not or make the mistake or not be able to handle it, they just do it themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, so people have to self check themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you're right. I I didn't think about it that way, but I guess they do. They should. Yeah. Um and and the person that I was dealing with, we bumped heads all the time because some women they some women want to be the man in the relationship. Okay. You know, and some Um, the man of the relationship. Some women want to be the man of the relationship. Okay. Yeah, and I guess because <laughs> I don't see any relationship where yeah. that I'm involving myself in that I want to be both roles. But I, but I think, like you said, in the beginning, most women, mm-hmm. professional women, mm-hmm. they would love to give those duties of leadership. That's me to the man. I don't want to come home and have to do the same thing that I do at work. I that's just my opinion, and I have pe- I have other friends or people that I spoke with right. who feel the same way too. They want to be able to mm-hmm. get home and pass the baton. They right. want to be like, hey. You handle it. Thanks a lot. Right, and just like and just like at work, there's supervisors who don't want to micromanage and they don't want to hold your hand. No, they yeah. do want to allow and you maybe to have that freedom. And maybe that kind of coincides with those two type of personalities, like just myself. I don't want to. I don't want to do that at work. Right. So I would say, you know, if you're a woman in leadership and you know, evaluate yourself. You know, how, how am I giving the people that I work with a yeah. chance to lead and an opportunity to shine? Right. Am I going home? Am I giving my spouse? Am I giving my partner? Okay. You know, a chance to lead and yeah. not controlling every decision. All right. You know, these are things that, you know, should be evaluated. Yeah. yeah. So we have, you know, we have a few questions out there. Yeah. So, so let's, okay, let's sum these questions up or kind of like get around mm-hmm. to all these questions because we want your feedback. So one of the questions is, do you have a work spouse? Yes. Or I guess if you don't have a work spouse, describe that relationship. Right. So if it's like a work aunt or mm-hmm. work sister or work brother I, or work dad. <laughs> right. And I also <laughs> want to hear about your work spouses. Even, hey, when, when I think I went in too far my work spouse. I need help <laughs> on how to dial back. Oh, if there's, if yeah. there's some of you that are in trouble and like, hey. So you that's, know, okay, so the, do you have a work yeah, spouse? Yeah, work spouse. Dad, mom, or aunt. Correct. Cousin, friend, whatever. Grandma, right. Correct. <laughs> Grandma. Yeah. And the, work pimp. Watch work, out for watch out for the work pimp. Have a, watch out for your work pimp. Yes. Or have you been pimped at work? Right. <laughs> Rather, that's more of the question. Correct. Have you been pimped at work? Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah. So those are things that we want to know. Get feedback. We want to share the response with you. On oh, the and the last one mm-hmm. is about the roles. Yes. How do you turn your role on and off outside? And within the office. So how do you put your office hat on, your work hat on, and then take it off when you get home as a work spouse? Yeah. Or partner. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So these are the things. So uh, what's our social media so they can our, follow us? Yes, our social media is at a work spouse pod. We can be followed on all platforms at work spouse pod, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we also have, you know, subscribe to our podcast online as well. And be sure to like kind of com- converse with us about it. We want to hear more about like how you all work environments kind of like look what it looks like yes. and how you manage them. Okay. So, until yeah. next time, coworkers. Yes. Until next time. <laughs> Everyday hustle, never touching a thing And you wonder how I'm balancing weight with one beam ha. It's a mouse click Southwitz